A car fire incident in Tiananmen Square occurred on October 28, 2013. Authorities blamed Uyghur terrorists for the incident. At the root of the incident lies the Chinese Communist Party's oppression of the Uyghur people. Since April of this year, the Beijing police have murdered 30 Uyghurs. To get to the bottom of this incident, we went to Washington, D.C. and Kashgar in Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region on high alert for a special report. Along with Ryoko Shaku, the Happiness Realization Party leader, we went to interview Rabia Kadir, president of the World Uyghur Congress. Rabia stands at the head of the Uyghur People's Movement and continues her work in the United States as an exiled Uyghur leader. She herself was unjustly arrested by the Chinese Communist Party and spent six years in prison. Currently, her two sons are in prison after being unjustly convicted as well and her daughters have been placed under surveillance by the Chinese authorities. Uyghur has been receiving a lot of attention since the October 28th car fire incident in Tiananmen Square. What do you think about this? I believe that the purpose of the October 28th incident was to let the world know the situation regarding oppression of the Uyghur people by the Chinese Communist Party by sacrificing their life. Since April of this year, the Chinese Communist Party has already murdered around 30 Uyghurs. When young people were praying in a mosque, the police stormed in and sprayed bullets at everyone. After the massacre, the police threw the dead, the dying, and even people who were wounded but still alive into a hole that they had dug in front of everyone there. This kind of thing is a daily occurrence in Uyghur. China, where things like that happen routinely, has become a major country with the world's second largest GDP. However, the current situation is not likely to continue. I don't think stability will be achieved in China unless something is done about the Communist Party. The Communist Party is a threat not only to Han Chinese and us, but also to the world. Its existence is threatening. The incident in Tiananmen Square wasn't an act of terrorism, but rather a desperate act of protest against the Uyghur crackdown, says Rabia. In 1949, the Chinese Communist Party belligerently occupied East Turkestan with armed forces and claimed it as the Xinjiang province of China. In this newly conquered territory, where the native people's race, religion and culture differed from their own, they found an abundance of natural resources, such as oil, natural gas and rare metals, quickly making the area indispensable to the Chinese. As the Communist Party advanced its conquest of Xinjiang province, the oppression of the Uyghur people gradually intensified. The Uyghur people are economically discriminated against. They are not allowed to use their mother tongue. They are also religiously oppressed. Their daughters often forcefully taken away from them. And furthermore, the Uyghur people have no right to speak their minds. Independent publications are banned, and even if websites are created, they are immediately shut down and the creator arrested. Those who have graduated university are not able to find employment because many companies only select Han people. There was one particular incident in which the racial discrimination against the Uyghur people surfaced, the Urumqi massacre of July 5, 2009. Shots were fired by the armed police and the military into a crowd of 1,300 Uyghur people participating in a peaceful demonstration. Later, a mob of Han people attacked the Uyghurs, resulting in 1,000 deaths and 5,000 arrests. When you see the reaction of the Chinese people living in Urumqi after the massacre on July 5, 2009, they were all holding weapons of all types, assaulting any and all Uyghur people, regardless of whether they were women, children, or the elderly, living in the same town. Generally, Urumqi citizens tend to live in the same area and most tend to know each other. However, the Han committed atrocities in killing their friends and neighbors using all sorts of weapons. If they were human, how could they kill someone that they live with, or with the people that they share the same town with them? It's not normal. Kashgar, 
the self-governed Xinjiang Uyghur region. The city was on high alert. We saw public security and armed police officers every 200 meters as we traveled around. We covered the Tiananmen Square car fire incident and oppression by the Communist Party. However, the responses we heard from local people were not what we had expected. We continued our interviews with people in outlying villages. During the interviews, a man who claimed to be the leader of the town's Communist Party monitored us the entire time from the side. They would start talking about how they were saved by the Communist Party without us even asking about it. We saw this and thought, Ah, everything that we ask here and all of their responses must be being reported back to the local Communist Party leader. We interviewed Dr. Tur Muhammad, a Uyghur who is familiar with China's oppression in Uyghur. Uh, え、総合監視システムを作ってるんですね。どういう総合監視システムかというと、え、住人家族が一つのグループになって、え、お互い監視するというシステムですね。え、だからあの、え、大体そのグループの中でど誰の家にどっからお客さん来たりとかも全部細
I feel that my prayers are slowly being answered. When I asked Vivia how she stayed so strong through all of what has happened to her, she said it was because she was with God. I emphasized very much with this. I felt very strongly that behind this extremely intense battle against the Chinese Communist Party exists a motherly kind of love. This has become a source of leadership that gives inspiration all around the world. After all, people of this level, which includes the likes of Nelson Mandela, in order to overcome the ethnic conflicts that are yet to occur, must be people who can understand universal values and array them. Otherwise, they won't be able to find solutions to international problems. They won't even be able to make an argument. Such is a kind of era that I feel is coming. この神の子だからです。神のことしての自由と尊さを保障されなければなりません。それが人権なるものの根拠です。その思いにおいて創造をなすことができ、その思いにおいて世界を作り変えていくことができ、その思いにおいて歴史を Recently, South African President Nelson Mandela passed away. Currently in China, racial discrimination to a degree even worse than that of apartheid in South Africa continues. This is something that we, the Japanese as a neighboring country, cannot ignore. It's important that we as Japanese people become aware that we have a responsibility to protect and spread freedom and justice. I ask all of you, what do you think?